Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to actually take a look at using some of these logs and these exponents. Now, one of the most common things that we're going to use these exponents for is something like the following. A equals P E raised to the R T. Now, so this is amount, and this is a lot of times called principle. Principle, or sometimes it's called n sub zero, which is the original amount. And then you have R. R is for rate, the rate at which something is happening. And then T is for, of course, time. Now, time can be uh, in seconds, can be in minutes, can be in years, can be a number of things, okay? But basically, let's assume that we have, we want to know how much money we have compounded continuously for $1,000 at 4% uh, interest. Boy, anybody would kill for some 4% interest. Now, it's 1.04 because 4% above that, and let's say I let it sit there for five years. At this point, we would simply say, oh, 1,000 times E raised to the whole deal, and that's going to give us our amount. Alternatively, maybe I want to know how long will it take to reach $20,000. Well, in that case, I would say, oh, there's the 1,000 I started with times E raised to the 1.04, that's my rate, and then I have X, or I have T, because I don't know how long it is. At this point, then, I can solve using logs and exponents, move the 1,000 over, and we'd say, oh, well, that's going to be 20 equals E to the 1.04 T. Then we say, oh, that's log base E of 20 equals 1.04 T. And then we divide by 1.04, and we get T by itself. And that tells us how many years it's going to take to get to $20,000. That's the kind of basic idea. Now, we also use this a lot in doubling time. So, for example, if I have a certain number of bacteria, and those bacteria grow at a certain rate, or they double in a certain amount of time, how long will it take to reach something else? So in a lab experiment, it says 590 bacteria placed in a petri dish. Conditions are such that the bacteria is able to double every 24 hours. How many bacteria will there be after 13 hours to the nearest whole number? So we have our time it takes to double. We have how long it's going to be, and we have our starting number. So let's show this solution. You should notice y equals that amount, and we're going to double it, and it's going to be time divided by d. Now, in this case, it's the time it takes to double. So, because it doesn't take a whole year to double, it only takes 24 hours. So, in this case, you plug in 590, that's your initial amount. Then, you say, well, I want to double some stuff, right? How much bacteria will there be if I'm doubling? But it is 13 hours out of 24. So 13 hours out of 24. And you say, oh, there you go. How many bacteria will there be after 13 hours? That's just plugging it in. Could we have done exactly the opposite and said y equals 590 times 2 raised to the time over 24? All right, could we have done the exact same process, but now said, well, how long will it take to get to a thousand bacteria? I don't know the time, so I have to solve for it. Divide by 590, divide by 590. Then I'm going to say log base 2 of a thousand over 590 equals t over 24, multiply by 24, and then I can solve. So we're going to put all this stuff to work. All right, so let's go back. Let's take a look at interpreting a constant. Now, in this particular case, 
we see our formula again. How much do I start with? 980. What am I doing? Well, it's only going to be 92.5% of what it was. So instead of growing, we're going to be shrinking. So it represents a change in time. Because remember I said when we did 4%, it was 1.04. Okay? So the function is decaying because it's not bigger than 1 at a rate of, well, how much shy of 100% is it? going to be shy by 7.5% every, uh, looks like year is the way this one is set up. Oh, nope, T months, T months per month. Submit answer. There we go. Okay, so let's move on to growth and decay percentage. Well, in this case, given the following function, identify whether it represents growth or decay. Well, is this number bigger than 1? Yes, it is. So it is definitely growth. How much bigger than 1? Let's move the decimal point. It's going to be 5.9% bigger. There we go. Submit the answer. By the way, how much did we start with? 4,700. Okay. So let's keep on going. Compounding. In this case, wants to invest an account at 3.5% compounded monthly. Now, in this case, we're going to need a slightly different formula because instead of continuously, it's going to be compounded monthly versus this much, but it's only compounded quarterly. So we're going to need two different formulas. The, one, the formula here represents if it's doing it other than continuously, you would use this formula, so it's our standard rate. If it's monthly, that means 12 pay periods, so N would be 12, and the time would still be in years. If it's quarterly, four payments. All right, with that in mind, that gives you the basics on putting some applications to use.